So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple just released iPad OS 15.2 RC edition, which means that we're pretty much a week away from it being released to the entire public. So we're gonna talk about everything that's new with 15.2, everything you need to know, some of those bug fixes and improvements, and then finally that battery life to see where we are. Because if you guys notice with beta four, battery life was actually on the uptick for the first time in a very, very long time. So let's get into this video, find out what's new with 15.2. So when you do update, you know exactly what to look for. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. I know the widget section looks kind of crazy right now on my home screen. I am working on a widgets video for iPad OS 15 and moving forward, but let's go right into this video and talk about the build number. So if we go into the about section, see what we got going on here. We are now on 15.2. 19C56. So we got rid of that moniker, that lowercase moniker. We were on B, so we totally skipped the letter A, and now on the RC edition, which if you are on the developer program, this is going to be your final release. Because if you guys follow me on Twitter, then you'll know that we did actually take a picture or take a screenshot of exactly how big this file was. So if you are on the beta program, with a 5.09 gigabyte size update, this is gonna be the final release for what everybody is getting. So iPadOS 15.2, was about five gigabytes. So give yourself, you know, basically 10 gigabytes of open space in order to get this installed and get it installed properly. The last thing I want is for it to kind of cancel midway and then all of a sudden you're in recovery mode and then you have to reset the iPad. So this is what we're dealing with in terms of size for iPad OS 15.2, the RC edition, which again will be the final release that everybody's gonna be able to see. So the first setting that I do wanna show off is actually inside of the settings menu. We go into your iCloud, go into your passwords and security now, Apple did release this with, I think, the beta 2 update, but if you see down here, we now have something called a legacy contact. So a legacy contact is someone you trust to have access to the data in your account after your death. So yes, it's a very sad kind of setting, but it's something that's very important in today's world where all of our information, all of our photos, all of our videos, our memories, our bank account information, our grocery list, like you name it, you know, our passwords, our, our ability to turn on our smart home and all this stuff, it's all built into these devices. So that now that Apple has given us a way to kind of pass that data down in a terrible situation that something happens to you. So you can add legacy contacts, you can you know add your wife, your husband, whoever it is that you trust in order to give them your data after that time comes. And here it says, your legacy contact can access and download data from your account after your death. The friends or family members that have been added as your legacy contact will appear here. A legacy contact can access and download from the owner's account after their death. And if you press learn more, it does give you a little bit more information inside of the Apple support. So keep that in mind if you wanna do a little bit more research. But all you do is you add legacy contact, you get a little splash screen right here and it lets you know exactly how to do it. But that is legacy contacts, a very sad feature, but something that is needed in today's world. So, so if Brian Tong is watching this, that's a good Apple. So another nice little feature that Apple added is again, if you go back into your iCloud, then go into your actual iCloud account, you have the ability now to hide my email. So private relay and hide my email have actually been around since 15.0, but now what's nice about hide my email is that it works natively inside of Safari and with the native mail application. So if you do use Apple's native mail application, then you'll be able to hide your email natively from that mail application. I'm still waiting for Apple to give that ability to third party users because again, I use Spike Mail, which is the my mail client of choice. It's a third party application that I like to use for mail. So once that comes to third party developers and you have that ability to actually just hide your email from any application, that's gonna be beautiful. But so know now that it does work inside the native mail application and with Safari. So let's keep going with this whole privacy situation because Apple is really pushing privacy and they're making privacy a actual feature of iPadOS and iOS and their whole Apple ecosystem. So the next one is at 15.2, add something called child communication safety. So what this does is when you set up your child with their iPhone, with their iPad, with their iOS and iPadOS device, you now as a parent have the ability to limit what can be sent. So Apple does do this with a search, but it's all internal. So let's say you give your 13 year old an iPhone, you know, you don't want them to be sending anything they shouldn't be sending, like any images that shouldn't be sent out. So basically what happens is if that child tries to send that image via iMessage, Apple will then notify the parent that, hey, your child is about to send something, make sure that it's okay that they send it. So it doesn't completely stop it from being sent, but it doesn't notify the parent like, hey, you know, your son or your daughter's doing something that they shouldn't be doing, you should probably go check on them. And the way that Apple does this is all internally. They don't do anything 
in the cloud, in the Apple servers, it's all checked with machine learning on device. So you technically don't need to worry about Apple snooping through your images to make sure like, hey, this is a good picture to send, this is a bad picture to send. But that's a nice little feature, Apple just making everything as privacy centric as possible, especially in an age where, you know, people where kids at the age of eight years old now have full access to the internet at the palm of their hand. So a couple smaller updates. So if we go into the actual Apple Music app, again, I am not an Apple Music subscriber, but you do have the ability to create playlists. And now there's a search bar inside the playlist. Apparently this wasn't around with custom playlists that you created before, but now you have the ability to search any song based on artist, song title, genre, all within the playlist that you created or that Apple Music created for you. Another update to one of Apple's native apps is actually an Apple TV. So if we go to Apple TV, we now have a nice sidebar organized menu. So this wasn't here before in 15.1 and 15.0, but Apple's just bringing that other threshold, which they normally do in what they did with the Files app and the Music app and all these different native applications. They're just adding this to allow you to organize everything a little bit better. And I will say that Apple TV Plus is well worth the $5 a month subscription just based on the things that they have, like Ted Lasso for all mankind, the morning show Invasion is actually freaking amazing if you guys want to try it out. I'm on the last episode, which should come out on Friday. So very excited about that. But overall, that's a nice little upgrade to Apple TV app. And you don't need to be a TV Plus subscriber to get this update. So now we actually have a couple new upgrades to the Apple Podcast app. Again, I use Spotify to listen to most of my podcasts, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows and is aware that now you have the ability to share podcasts with somebody else. So find podcasts shared by your friends and messages and listen now. But then also, we got a couple of things in the settings, actually. So we go out of here, let's go into settings, let's go to the actual podcast app, depending on where it is, here we go. So you now have a couple of things that you can do. So you do have the ability to do continuous playback, which is brand new. And then also, you can actually customize the skip buttons. So I don't know about you guys, but for me on Spotify, I have it fast forwarding every 15 seconds. Same with YouTube. So for here, you can actually go into and see exactly how fast it's skipping. So you can do it at 10 second intervals, all the way to 60 second. And then same with backwards. So you can do 10 second intervals all the way to 60 seconds, depending on what you're most comfortable with. And you can customize it however you see fit. So a nice little upgrade there on the podcast for a little customization. But that's pretty much it when it comes to actual new features with 15.2. So very privacy centric and Apple again is pushing that as a feature. The next thing I do wanna talk about is overall stability. So overall stability has been great. I mean, I've only had this exact RC edition for a little while, but beta four was extremely stable. Multitasking work, the bug where I, get, I kept getting kicked out of Twitter stopped happening so if i go into twitter right now it loads up automatically which is good to go which is nice to see so overall performance can't really complain everything is working smoothly and as advertised and then lastly what we're going to check is actually battery life so if we go down let's click on battery life let's go to the last 10 days and see exactly what we're working with so again let's go on a day like friday where we had seven hours and 13 minutes of screen on time and almost two hours of screen off time, which again, totals us to nine hours and 15 minutes of screen on time roughly. And it only took up a little less than 100% of battery. So that is a full day of use. Like I'm happy with a day like this. But then you go on a day like Saturday, only three hours and 42 minutes of screen on time with the pretty much 100% battery taken up and all of it done by YouTube TV for three and a half hours. Again, on Sundays, I watch a lot of football, YouTube TV. So that's just what comes with the work. And then Monday, another day, three hours and 10 minutes two hours and 15 minutes of screen off time. So a total of about five hours and a half. Again, only 50% battery. So it really just depends on how you're using the device. And then we go on a day like Tuesday, screen on time only an hour and 13 minutes, an hour of screen off time, but look how much battery has been taken up. About 75%, almost 80% with only two hours of use. So the battery life is very variant and variable based on the exact applications that you're using. So the more native applications you use, the longer your battery life is gonna, is gonna last. So overall, battery life is getting a little bit of an uptick in terms of performance and getting us through the day with the battery life, but there still could be some improvements. So I'm hoping with the actual public release, we'll get some nice battery improvements. But that's pretty much it when it comes to features and performance. And then again, the battery life, if you guys do wanna see some of the more nuanced stuff, like the small little changes that happened inside of like the visuals and things like that, feel free to go through the each beta to see what the, those differences are. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal one. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, iPadOS 15.2 did bring some nice substantial upgrades from a privacy perspective, and then also some new features in there like in the Apple TV app, legacy contacts, and things like that. We still don't have that headlining feature of universal control, which we're still holding out for, and I'm really hoping Apple does give it to us with iPadOS 15.3, 
because I think it'll kind of help people with iPads really use it and find a new way to use it with their Mac computer, with their Mac OS computer, and kind of use it as that supplemental device that a lot of people use their iPads for. For me personally, it's gonna be more of a proof of concept because my iPad is my main computer, but I still wanna play around with it and see how viable it is and see if it's an actual efficiency gain solution for Mac OS and iPad OS together. But overall, I'm happy with the stability of 15.2 RC edition, excited to see what Apple does next, so let me know in the comments below, are you guys gonna update to 15.2 when it comes out? Do you usually wait a week or so to make sure all the bugs are kind of fixed and, and gotten rid of and kind of wait for that 15.2.1 iteration? Let me know in the comments below, I'm always curious to know. But that's gonna do it for this video. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, everybody, leave a comment down below if you guys made it to the end. What's your favorite feature from 15.2? Let's do it. Peace. I'm out of here.